So for a while now, I wanted to get an actual functioning fume HUD to do my chemistry experiments in, because many of them were actually kind of dangerous with a bunch of toxic vapors. I decided to build a massive one entirely from scratch, with the help of some trips to Home Depot. So let me show you how it's done. First off, I needed a plan for my fume HUD, and I decided that I wanted mine to be huge in order to be able to fit in a full fractional distillation setup. Thus. After scribbling and brainstorming a bit on paper, I came up with this as the game plan, which is a rectangular prism with 42 inches as its height, a width of 48 inches and a depth of 36 inches. This is definitely very spacious for a regular fume hood. Planning this out took longer than some of my actual experiments and more brain power, not gonna lie. Honestly, I probably should have studied architecture. I equally wanted to use some galvanized square steel for this project, but I realized it's too expensive. Anyways, other than the fiber boards and wooden beams that I needed to get from Home Depot, I also needed to get the most important part of the fume hood. I went with a 300 CFM fan due to the massive size of my fume hood. Now it's time for a trip to Home Depot. I finally got a ton of fiber boards and got it cut there to the desired size. There were also some tools at home if I needed to correct anything at the last minute. I also needed to get some wooden beams as the supporting frame of the fume hood as well as some wheels that I can attach to the bottom so the entire structure can actually be moved around easily. After heading out, I definitely overestimated my ability to carry all of this stuff out of the store. It was difficult, but after putting everything in my car, I can actually get to the fun part, which is to actually build the thing. A huge thanks to my dad because this wouldn't have been possible without him, as he taught me a lot about woodworking and helped in steps along the way. Often, when trying to build a structure, You've probably seen construction workers building houses by making a frame first, and that's exactly what I'll be doing. Because, as you might have known, butt joints are weak. Thus, grabbing some wooden beams, they were cut to the desired size with my dad's saw for the frame, and this already took a while to be honest. When these were finally finished, I got a big box of screws from my aunt for the next step. Then, I started to screw around, literally, by inserting screws at the connection of each joint of the beams. This part was actually quite fun, and I got my hands on an electric drill which does the job pretty quickly. Now the frame was built so that, in the later phase, I can then screw on the main MDF boards, but before that, I decided to add some beams to the fume hood surface. I also wanted to add another layer beneath as extra space to store my chemicals and tools. Now when the frame is about finished, I can then add on some corner brackets to support each of the joints. These were screwed in with some more nails for extra strength. Now I can finally say that the frame was done, so it's time to attach the small wheels so that I can actually roll this heavy thing around. Adding wheels was necessary, because otherwise moving this thing would be equivalent to a full body workout. The MDF boards can then be attached to the five sides, and they were attached with some more nails screwing it tight. Here, you can see that some of them actually had to be cut and corrected a bit so that they can actually fit onto the frame. The first board that I attached was the bottom surface or the workspace. And since I had 1.5 inch square beams on each of the four corners, these were drawn and cut out. I can then place this huge board on top and get to screwing the sides. When this was all done, we got to fixing on the backboard. Again, by trimming it a bit, turning it around and placing it on. Four of the sides were done, and now I just have to use a compass and draw a nice round hole slightly towards the back of the top board with a six inch diameter for my ventilation tubing adapter. See, I knew geometry in math class was gonna be useful someday. Now it's time for another trip to my favorite hardware store, Home Depot to get a few other important items, like some adhesive silicone glue for the edges of my fume hood, some extension cords for all of the electronic devices, as well as the fan adapter that I mentioned earlier. I was also lucky to have gotten this huge 42 by 48 inch thick acrylic board as my sash thanks to one of my friends and I waited till the end to install it. After drilling two small holes on our top board with the help of a hole saw, the 6 inch diameter hole was then cut out with a jigsaw. When the round circle was cut out, I realized that I guess I am too cut out for this. Then, 
Back on the sides of the fuel hood, on the left I drilled a small hole to fit in all of my power supply. After vacuuming the inside, I can proceed to the next part. I know, there's been a lot of steps already, but now what I have to do is put on our adhesive silicone glue bought from Home Depot onto each of the edges where the fiber boards meet. This helps keep our fume hood airtight and maximize the airflow at the opening of the sash, but honestly, I could have gone without it. I'm not sure how much it might have helped the fume hood. It kind of reminds me of frosting a cake. I have no idea why. After waiting another day for all of the glue to dry, I can then start painting on a matte layer of black paint I got from Home Depot again. And I can start off with the corners and the frames with a small paintbrush, then work my way towards the larger surfaces with a big paint roller. Some of the outside, like the legs of the frame, were also painted in black since I felt like it. When this is all dried, I can then put on a second coat of paint just to make sure that everything was nice and covered with a good seal. Now the last step is to add on the boards for my bottom shelves, which I again screwed on. On the bottom shelf, I put into boxes my reagents like acids, bases, and oxidizing agents as well as some alcohols. On the top, I have all of my glassware as well as tools. Moving back onto the top, my 300 CFM fan was then installed at the left and all of the tubing connected as you can see here. Now the tubing I used was 8 meters long, however it does have a metal like coating, I think aluminum inside of it. Thus, I might have to think twice about expelling vapors like bromine which could react or acids which could corrode it. The last thing I added was an optimal chain hook mechanism for keeping the sash in place, but I really don't think it was that mandatory because I did install some small nails that the board can latch on onto the sides. Now a fume hood's all about the airflow, and here are some important tips if you want to construct your own. Make sure the face velocity is around like 90 to 100 FPM, and you can calculate that with this formula, which involves the CFM of your fan, as well as the area of your opening. I calculated mine to be around 10 inches to 12 inches. You also don't want to put large objects in the fume hood, as you want the airflow to be as laminar as possible, and often objects like hot plates are even put onto lab jacks. Also, all objects should always maintain a 6 inch distance from the opening. So yeah, I mean, I gotta say, I think this Fuma was a pretty big success. It definitely made my lab a lot safer, and when I tested it out by burning some smoky paper, there was basically no smoke smell in my lab, and all of it was sucked upwards. Now there may be some concerns over flammability, but I won't be doing anything too crazy in it. There's also multiple layers of paint, as well as a plastic coating, so I don't think there's much to worry about. I will also keep a fire extinguisher nearby, just in case. I swear, before I know it, this could totally be sold as an IKEA item. Anyways, again, I would like to thank my Patreon supporters for making these cool projects more affordable and I will provide behind the scenes, ad free content, shoutouts, and more. If you would like to support a high school student like me, just $3 would go a long way in helping this channel to continue providing quality and educational chem content. So I want to thank you all for watching till the end, and while you're at it, please consider a sub.